our scriptures mention about two types of devtas. Devta means demigods or deities. The first kind are anthropomorphic manifestations of the elements of nature. And the second type are the great personalities who have served and paved the path for the humanity in a greater way. So today we are going to look into the first part, the anthropomorphic manifestations of the elements of nature. Now anthropomorphic means anthropos that means human and morphic means shape, manifestations means manifestations or incarnate. So we humanize, our rishis humanized the elements of nature in human form so that they comprise of some qualities and those qualities are easily understood by us. For that they are given a certain manifestation, a certain story and a certain figure with which we can relate. And this has not been in, not only in our culture, this has been in many ancient cultures that have passed the test of time. By elements of nature, I mean the water, the fire, the wind, they all are considered as devtas. Now, why to worship them? The term worship does not only mean to play a part. The worship actually means to worship, to carry the worth. The word puja, that is a little uh, translation of the term worship in Sanskrit. Puja came from the root word puj, that means shambhardhana. Shambhardhana means expansion de or development. So anything that brings development needs puja. So puja is an activity by which development comes. Now take an example. If we don't serve our nature, if we don't serve the trees properly, they stop giving us fruits. If we don't take care of the forests, they show the repercussions. The, 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 the forests play an important role as a carbon sink. They extract a lot of uh, carbon, from, carbon from our environment. And that helps us in having a cleaner air. They brings down rainfall. Look at the oceans. The start, the 70% of the oxygen of the world comes from the ocean. Ocean is the source of life. The food chain starts from the zooplankton and phytoplankton in, uh, in, the, in the oceans. Without them, there would have been no animal, nothing, no plant in this world. So there is an importance of water. So water, so we have to worship water. Otherwise, if we don't serve it in a proper sense, then it won't reciprocate. It is not like the water is our enemy. It is because this is how the world works. There is a certain bidhi or certain law at play. Now, people may ask, are these, uh, are these elements really alive? Are they really conscious like us? If they are not, then how are we anthropomorphizing them? How are we giving them human forms and human stories? To answer to that, I would ask them the same question. That water, air, these things are made up of atoms and subatomic particles. And so are we. If subatomic particles are not conscious at all, then they permutate and combine, combine to form us. And they also permutate and combine to form the air, to form the trees, to form the rocks. Then how come we are alive and they are not? How come the atoms are not conscious and suddenly we are conscious? I've asked this question to many of teachers and scientists. They said that, okay, there, there are some, uh, there are some uh, modifications in DNA, but still the questions uh, come that how come that DNA is alive? The DNA is also comp comprised of chemicals. And how does that chemicals became suddenly conscious? So there is no answer to this question in the way the, the modern science is thinking. So the co consciousness is a big thing. And according to the sages, according to their realizations, everything is composed of vibrations. And the subtlest of all vibrations carry this consciousness. And by that definition, every element has its own play, has its play its own part. And they are conscious in their own way. The more uh, developed they are, the more conscious they are in their own level. 
So this way we anthropomorphize the nature. So fire, water, we all bow down to them because they serve us. They serve us in a great way. From time immemorial they are serving us. This is the beauty of the worship. Now there is a catch that uh, we know the qualities of fire. It can burn us. But it also helps us. Now if a child touches the fire, it does not mean that his hand won't burn, won't get burned just because she or he, he does not know the danger of touching the fire. This is how the law works. This is called the providence. My master says, That means, the Bidhiya law, the law itself has no conscience. It has no knowledge of itself. It is just as it is. It has both things. Just like if you see law Ma Kali, she has at one hand Borabhai or Ashirvat, grace, and on her other hand she carries the weapon. In the same level. What does that mean? That means you have to choose a path, right or wrong. And the nature will reciprocate in the same way. You just have to choose and nature will reciprocate that way. So this is how the elemental forms are worshipped as devdas in a very easy way. I hope it is understood. Now, which one to choose, how to choose, when to choose, we have to learn that from a man who has realized the same. These kind of personalities who have realized the elementals of nature, they are called guru. Because they know, they know the way and they teach us. Now this teacher can come in all varieties, in all levels. The greater their fulfillment is, the greater their realization is, the greater they are. The, the greater they are. And uh, Swami Vivekananda says, there are some teachers who are the teachers of all teachers. And they are actually called Purushottams or fulfillers the best or fulfiller the best. Such personalities come very rarely after hundreds of years or I don't know the time, but they come in their own necessity. And such a person is also called the living ideal in life. That kind of person has certain qualities and he is the devatas of all devatas. Just like in the stories of our scriptures we can see, just like in the stories of Puranas, we can see that all the Devitas, when they are worried, they go to Lord Vishnu and ask for help. The same place here. Because the, the God, whom we call God, are the fulfiller of all demigods. The Purushottam is the fulfiller of all the Purushas. So no matter what we do, at first we need an Acharya. Acharya. We first need an Acharya. Acharya means someone who shows me the path. And the Acharya of all Acharyas is the Purushottam, the greatest fulfiller. By having in our, him, by having him in our lives, we can rectify ourselves like none other.